Well, joining me here in Westminster, Archul Kramuna, the Labour MP and Open Britain supporter. Uh, you might have seen him in uh, Tom's piece a few minutes ago. We brought him in from the uh, cold. And uh, <laughs> Richard Tice, uh, co-chair of Leave Means Leave. Welcome to you well, both. Um, Richard Tice, uh, from what we know in advance of what the Prime Minister is going to say, does it please you or does it uh, give you concerns? Well, look, there's going to be lots of warm words, as always, following her Lancaster House speech, her Florence speech. But what's absolutely vital is that she doesn't make concessions without having concessions made from the other side. And she doesn't negotiate against herself because, you know, the reality is we've got to be prepared to walk away, if necessary, if we're not going to get a sensible deal. Yeah. And if, if we're not prepared to walk away, we will end up but later I, in the year I, with a bad deal. I mean, deal. it's clearly when she's talking about a close relationship, this is not a belligerent speech, is no, it? No, sure. It, but uh, she's, she's given very warm, uh, positive noises in her previous speeches. And what we would quite like, actually, is some warm, positive noises back from the European Union. We've seen precious little of that, and I think it's high time we did. Joker Bruno, is this moving in your direction? No. <laughs> Funny I should say that. I mean, the first thing is, let's not forget, this is a complete mess. Uh, she has been Prime Minister for more than a year and a half. We're halfway through the negotiations, and only now is she coming forward with the granular detail that um, well, everybody you... wants to see. I've, I've seen... Is there the... granular detail no, in the speech? No, the problem with the speech is it is still insisting on taking us out of the single market and the customs union. And, of course, she put that to the British public at the general election last year... With your manifesto. And, ...and lost her majority. Well, we can come to my manifesto if you want. And, of course... Now that she seems intent on that course, obviously, you know, the focus is, and I don't think it's either or, but a lot of people like Liam Fox do, think that it's all about going and uh, getting deals with other non-EU economies. Now, they are not going to necessarily fill the gap. Donald Trump, I don't want to put our trade policy in his hands. He's going to put America first, and both America and China are far, far bigger than us. So we are walking away from a very big market that we negotiate other trade deals with the rest of the world with, and we are not going to see anything like the new economic activity to fill the hole. And, of course, one of the big questions your viewers will have is how is her vision of the future relationship going to deliver the extra revenue for the Exchequer that is going to deliver all the extra billions of yeah. pounds, of 350 but, but million pounds extra it, per week for the I NHS? I mean, let's put this to Richard People Tyson. Want to see I mean, this. isn't the point, though, as you say, the warmth she's expressing towards Europe, saying how we want to maintain a close relationship, and suggesting that there might be, you know, some give and take in that. I mean, that is, if you like, rejecting the Dan Hannan vision of forget about Europe, it's uh, uh, in its coffin, we should be going out to the rest Look, of the world. You give warm and positive words in these sort of speeches. You negotiate the detail that Chuck has just referred to, you know, behind closed doors in the negotiating room. The reality is we need to leave the customs union in the single market so that we can maximise the benefits. It's extraordinary to hear Labour politicians well, deny consumers, the poorest in society, the opportunity of reducing costs of food, footwear and clothing uh, because w which yeah. we could reduce tariffs on non-EU products. That's, Adam, the, that's the sort of benefit that is there well, well, for the country but is that we need to grasp. Do you think she's actually softening on the customs union, whether you call it a customs union well, or a customs agreement? Because sure. she also says we must preserve the Good Friday Agreement, at which is uh, mm. some Brexiteers were suggesting could be the price that could go for this, and she says we've got to preserve the union as well. So do you detect a softening in that area? Not in the words that I've read. And look, on all those household items, they've all, of course, gone up in price because of 3% inflation caused by the depreciation of the pound sterling after we left the European, after we voted to leave the European Union. On the customs union, I mean, this is the big issue. There is no majority in Parliament at the moment for us to leave the customs union. I've put down an amendment, Anna Subri, we've both done it as the co-chairs of the all part of parliamentary group on EU relations. We've put down amendments to both the trade and the customs bill, which are commanding cross-party support. And many of the people in her own party will be looking to see whether she is paying attention to that majority in Parliament or is going to continue to seek to ignore it. She is delayed moving forward with the final stages of those bills because she knows she's going to lose 
a vote. And at the moment, I would argue that her negotiating position is actually undemocratic. If you cannot command support in the House of Commons and you're ignoring the fact that you lost your majority for the proposition of a hard Brexit at a general election, she has a totally unsustainable negotiating position. So many people across all parties will be looking very carefully to see whether she's going to listen to Parliament, which mm -hmm. in turn is acting on behalf well, of the people. Frankly, yeah. frankly, frankly, frankly Parliament should listen to the voters who voted well, in the general election yeah. last year, where 80% voted for two manifestos that said we were going to leave the yeah, single market the, and the leave the country. Hang on, hang on. You've reneged on that, no. Chucker. Richard, and it's extraordinary Richard. that, let's, let's that, just that be, Parliament wants right, to let, keep let, prices no, high let's when get, they could be no, reduced. No, let's get the facts straight about this. And look, I'm a Labour politician, I know what was in my manifesto. And the so Labour manifesto said that we would seek to retain the benefits of the customs union. We were absolutely and clear about that. And negotiate free trade deals it with did other not, countries. It and did, that means you it, have to leave no, the customs it union. It did not say absolutely that we were going to leave the customs union. OK, you didn't stand on my manifesto, I did. And I was actually clear there was a whole group of MPs which actually went further than that as well um, in other respects too. So let's not, let's not, you know, there was a lot of reinvention and sure over the course of that 2016 um, referendum there was lots of overblown claims on either side. But the interesting thing now, and this is why I think public opinion is shifting, yeah. we are seeing the facts that the rubber hits the road on this Brexit yeah. process. All of these yeah, things are actually being tested okay. by, against well, reality. Well, that's what I want to ask Richard, because uh, we know you don't want it. You know you think it's vital that we leave the customs yep. union. But do you think this speech could actually be preparing the ground to give way a little bit on that, bearing in mind what does appear to be uh, the mood of Parliament on this? I very much doubt it, because I think, you know, the, uh, the majority in the Conservative Party, I believe, uh, accepts her, her clear statements from the Lancaster House speech, from which she has not moved one iota, which is that we're leaving the single market and the customs union. And that is yep. right, because that's and, how you maximise the benefits of Brexit. And if she comes back to that wing of the Conservative Party and says, look, the price of me being able to get Brexit through Parliament is the customs union, do you bring the whole house down then? Do they, should they bring the whole house down? Well, time will tell, but, uh, you know, it's just not necessary. But wh what we've got to do is explain no. better... No, what we've got to do is explain better the benefits of leaving the customs union so that, actually, frankly, MPs can understand it better because far too many of them don't understand right. it. And no-one's walking away, okay. let's be clear, Listen, from the European Union. you've got 30 union. seconds each. What are the benefits of leaving the customs the union? The benefits is that you can reduce tariffs on non-EU products, you can negotiate your own trade deals with the fastest-growing economies in the world, and then you can start to deregulate unnecessary daft EU laws. OK, 30 seconds. It's, Why is that a bad idea? It's not either or. We want to maintain our biggest and best customer, the EU. Why do we have and, to stay in the customs And union? get to new ones, because we have the benefit of over 60 different trade deals with other countries, and we're part of a negotiating block of half a billion people. We're in a much stronger position to get trade deals. And to negotiate all these new ones Richard's talking about will take years. The Canada agreement the EU has is took six years to negotiate. We would take years to get all these new agreements. Why, you know, cut off your nose to spite your face? It doesn't make well, any it's, sense. It's called a positive can-do attitude. It's what we do in business every day. Okay, Politics well, is not business. It's and it about be, people. Because it would be it much shouldn't better be off. about business, actually. It's about people. Okay, well, uh, certainly you'd agree with John McDonnell on that. Thank you both very much indeed.